Amen. It always is so cute. Praise God. Amen. We just welcome you all here tonight. I know it's normally Bible study, so it's going to be half teaching, half preaching. I told everybody on Tuesday at prayer that as we draw to the end of this year, that you're going to hear the vision being laid out for next year. And I'm so excited about what God is going to do for us the rest of this year, but also in 2012. So, that being said, if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 28. We will read verses 18 through 20. Familiar passage of Scripture. If you would give me just a few moments here today. Amen. I believe God wants to speak to us. Matthew, chapter 28, beginning at verse number 18. The Bible says, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. I was thinking about... And God's been dealing with me about his heartbeat. So I want to talk a little bit about God's heartbeat today. You find in Matthew 28 and 18 that all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. But this is his heartbeat. We call this the Great Commission. To go ye therefore into all the world and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. I want you to think about something. In the world right now, on average, there is approximately 159,000 people dying per day in the world, which averages a death every two seconds. A little less than every two seconds, somebody in this world is dying. In the United States, they estimate that one death occurs every 13 seconds. If you multiply that out, that means 6,700 people die in the United States every single day. And in my mind, that means that it's potentially too many people that are on their way to hell. In my mind, that means that's too many people that may not have ever heard about Jesus Christ, that may not have ever experienced the love of God, that maybe have never been into a service where the Holy Ghost was moving. That lets me know that what Jesus said in Matthew 28, it's very relevant for us today that we have a great call to go into all of the world Amen. and preach the gospel unto every single creature. Amen. He told them, we've got to tell them that they must be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We have to share the gospel message. But I want to talk about evangelism. Did you know evangelism was a part of the Christmas story? Luke chapter number 2. Verses 8 through 17. The Bible says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the heights, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. Once the shepherds heard the glorious news by the angels, they heard the angels singing and worshiping God and praising God. And then the Bible says they had to go and see the child for themselves. The shepherds were not content just hearing an angel's account of Jesus Christ. Right. But the shepherds heard it. Then they felt praise and worship. And then they said, I have to go and experience this thing for 
You've got to understand that in this church, you have experienced the greatest thing that you could ever possibly experience. When you come into the house of God and, and somebody receives a gift of the Holy Ghost, that is the greatest gift and the greatest experience that anybody could ever have. It's happening in our church. Just last week, a brother got baptized and received the gift of the Holy Ghost.
to be saved. In this next year, we are going to be focused on evangelism. I'll get to the plan later on. But a second reason churches haven't grown, they say, is due to fear. Fear of not knowing what to say. Fear of whoever they are talking to is going to make fun of them. Fear of being shunned by their friends. Fear of being labeled a Jesus freak. One thing about evangelism is there's no magic script for it. I'm in sales, brother spikes in sales and insurance. And a lot of times companies, they give you scripts. And they say, you go out and say this. And if you say it this way, then you are going to get a sale. And I can tell you, it's absolutely not true. I don't care how much they tell you, it doesn't work. I don't care what they tell you. It doesn't work. <laughs> Evangelism, we try to make a cookie cutter approach to reaching somebody. And say, if you say this, or if you do this, then you are going to get people to come to church, and they're going to get baptized, and receive the Holy Ghost, and they're going to have all this great stuff happen. I'm going to tell you, the greatest thing, and the one thing that I have found, is the best way to evangelize is just to speak from your heart. Your own personal testimony. Trying to memorize a script or memorize all these scriptures, it doesn't mean the same thing as just going up to somebody and telling them what the Lord has done for you. We sing that song, I get joy, joy, joy when I think about the Lord. I'm standing in His presence. I give you more and more it says there's something about the Lord that gets all over me. It talks about going out and sharing the joy. When you have the joy of the Lord inside of you, you just speak from your heart. That's how people can connect with you in that way. They don't want to hear a bunch of scriptures shoved down their throats and say, you've got to be baptized, you've got to get the Holy Ghost, and you've got to do that. No. What we need is to personalize it and say, look, I just want to tell you about Jesus. And somebody, Sister Pauline's talking to a lady that's got cancer that can't walk. I don't know how bad or severe that it is, but I'm sure she probably said, you know what, I believe that God can you tell her that. I believe God can heal you. Just speak English. All right. Well, I maybe you didn't tell him that. I don't know. But if you find somebody, I've had people come up to me and say, man, I'm battling this. So I've got a family member battling this with cancer. And I can tell them, I have seen God heal cancer. I have seen God get, somebody got lifted out of a wheelchair. I saw it happen right before my own eyes. I have seen great things happen. So I can tell them because I've experienced that. I can say, look, we were just sitting in church one day and the pastor went down there and said, hey, we're going to get up out of this wheelchair. Grabbed him, picked him up, and he started walking. And then he started running across the front of the church. We can share because we have a testimony. We have a personal experience with God. And if you can just find a way to personalize it and just tell somebody, man, God loves you. Some of you guys want to be on drugs and alcohol and living a life of sin. You don't have to get into detail about what all that you did, but say, hey, I was a lot like you. I had a battle this and this, but then I went to a place. I found somebody who introduced me to Jesus. And then because of my introduction to Jesus, he came and touched my heart. Listen, Mark chapter 5. Everybody, will turn to Mark 5, 15 through 20. The Bible says in verse 15, it came to pass, or when they came to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil. And had legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they saw and told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. Just to backdate the story a little bit. The Bible says that Jesus went into this city and there was a man who lived in the tombs. And he was possessed with legion. The legion is a multitude of devils. He was possessed. He would, you know, he was bound in chains. He lived out in the in the tombs had battled things like cutting himself and all these other things, just being tormented. And Jesus went and set him free from this legion. And so this is where this picks up. Verse 17, And they began to pray him to depart out of the coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. So this guy said, Jesus, I want to go with you. Verse 19, Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. If you study Decapolis, it says it mentions here that he went to Decapolis. If you study this, you'll find that it is a place of ten cities. 
That's what made up the Decapolis. And they had experienced one of the greatest revivals because of this man's deliverance. Because this man was in such a bad place. You've got to understand his testimony. He was possessed by multitudes of devils. He, was, he tore himself apart. He used foul language. He lived in the tombs. He was lonely, abused, neglected, unloved, and unwanted. Didn't that sound like some of us? Neglected, abused, unloved, and unwanted. He had no mission. He had no purpose, and he had no life. And nobody wanted anything to do with him except Jesus. When Jesus came, he made everything okay. Jesus spoke life into him. Jesus gave him direction. Jesus gave him a purpose. Jesus gave him love. He showed him compassion. Jesus became his friend. And because of his experience with God, the Bible says that he went back to Decapolis and he published it abroad how great things God had done for him. And all the men began to marvel. His life was so bad. Everybody thought there's no way this guy can have a revival in his life. But it's those impossible situations and it's those impossible lives that God can show up and totally turn his world upside down. And it became one of the greatest witnesses that ever was in the Bible. Because ten cities turned themselves around and lived for God because of one man's testimony. Because of one person's testimony. Ten cities were turned upside down. What would happen today in your family, in your friends, and in your co-workers if one of us decided that we were going to share our testimony? If one of us said, I've got to tell you what Jesus has done for me. I don't care what you label me. I don't care if I'm a Jesus freak. I don't care if you shun me. I don't care if you want nothing to do with me. But I've got to tell you what I experienced when I came into the presence of the Lord. Some of us have had some bad past and we've had some hard lives. But if you can tell them how God touched your life and turned you around, that's going to give them hope and say, you know what, I know I feel like I'm hopeless. But if God can do it for me, then God can do it for you. Amen. The greatest revivals took place. This guy wanted to go with Jesus, but Jesus said, no, go and tell somebody. Go and tell your friends. Go and tell the Catholics what has happened to you. And because of that, the greatest revival happened for them. All you've got to do is be sincere. And all we've got to do is tell our testimony. The Bible says that we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Testimony. Why is the devil always attacking you? Why does the devil always want you to fail? Because it, it, it messes with our minds to say, okay, if I get baptized and I get the Holy Ghost and then I mess up, then I'm a failure. That this thing isn't real. The devil tries to get in your mind and say, you know what, that baptism stuff isn't any good. And that Holy Ghost, that stuff you experience isn't real because you're still messing up. And the devil wants to steal your testimony. He wants you to go back into the stuff you used to do. He wants you to be the person that you used to be. Because then your testimony is completely worthless. That's why it's so important <coughs> that every day that we live our life to the fullest for Jesus. Because if I mess up, if I go out in public, or if I go to a bar, and I come out, and I'm drunk, and I try to invite somebody to church, do you think they're going to want to come with me? Probably not, because my testimony is shot. Because now I'm no longer different, I'm just like everybody else. And the God that changed me, what do you mean God changed you? You're still at the bar drinking, you're still smoking the joint, you're still doing all this other stuff. So what are you talking about, the love of God, and the power of God can change you? Every day when we wake up, we've got to make sure that we're living our life to the fullest for Jesus Christ. Because somebody you come in contact, it may not be that day, but somebody's watching you. Somebody's watching your life and saying, man, I, you know, I see a difference in Brother Chris, but you know what? If, if they see you go back to how you were, then your testimony's ruined. So Brother Chris, stay the course. Josie, stay the course. We've got to keep living your life for God. And then as people watch you and they see that you're a brand new person, then you can say, let me tell you about Jesus. Right, that's right. And then you can share your testimony. This man turned ten cities upside down. The Bible says in Acts that Paul and the other disciple, or other apostle, was labeled as those were they that turned their world 
upside down. This is what the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and 8. We know the scripture, but I believe going into 2012 that we are going to be empowered to be a witness. Acts chapter 1 and 8 says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be, what? Witnesses. Witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. This is what I believe. I believe that God is wanting us to have revival in our city. Jerusalem was the city. He said, we're going to have revival in Jerusalem. You're going to be a witness in the city. And then you're going to spread out to Judea. And then you're going to spread out to Samaria. Then you're going to go to the uttermost part of the world. What I believe that God is wanting for us in this church is not to just reach our city, in our county, and have revival spread to our state. But I believe that in the last days, God is wanting our church, not our church, but the church as a whole, to begin to reach the uttermost. Yeah. Begin to reach those people that are way out there and say, there's no possible way they're going to find the love of God. There's no possible way that they're going to turn their life to Jesus. I believe that in this day, there's going to be a greater anointing poured out and a greater power to be a witness. That it's not going to be contained in a city or in a state or in a country. But we are going to reach the uttermost. somebody's life. So we're going to receive power. I believe in this year God is going to fill us with a greater power than we've ever had. The desire that we've had to witness, I believe, is going to be increased exponentially. Because every single day, almost 159,000 people are dying. Every single day. And I, I wish there was a percentage, but I don't know how many are apostolic, how many are not, how many know the truth, and how many are not. It really doesn't matter to me. All I know is that that's 159,000 people single day that may not have ever heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so now more than ever, church, now more than ever, as the Lord is coming back so soon, we need to make sure that we are reaching out and do what God has commanded us and do His heartbeat. We're going to start doing outdoor meetings. We're going to have services at the park starting in May. Our intel group, the young people's group, whatever they 18 to 20, I don't remember what their ages are. That young group, they're starting to organize a praise in the park in April. We're going to have in May, we're going to have an outreach uh, seminar, an outreach conference. Brother Matt Renew is going to come up and we're going to have a block party at the park. We're going to have a lot of cool stuff happening on. We're going to start apartment blitzes. We're going to do everything that we can possibly do to make sure that everybody in our city has a chance to hear about the love of God. So everybody in our city has a chance to feel what we feel and experience what we have experienced. But most importantly, we can do all this outreach stuff, but we need to have the Spirit of God moving in our services. And you need to have the Spirit of God moving in your life. Every single day, if we want to have the revival that God has promised us, and if we're going to have the revival that God has promised the church in the world, then we have to get over our shyness and say, you know what, let me just tell you about Jesus. You're going to be blacklisted from some people, sure. Yeah. Some people are going to have nothing to do with you. It's all right. The Bible says he told, Jesus told the disciples to shake the dust off your feet. Right. And he says, you're going to go into some houses, and he says, they're not going to receive you. And he said, hey, if they slam the door in your face, then take your shoes, wipe the dust off, and go find somebody else. Because there are people that are crying, that are weeping, that are hurting, and they're wanting more of God, and they're wanting to know something that is real, and something that is authentic. And it could be your life, and it could be your testimony that reaches somebody that never before would have felt the love of God. So we want to go after God's heartbeat. I want to be like the man that was possessed. Not the man that was possessed, that he was possessed, but I want to be like him that showed everybody, that told his testimony. You see people like Brother Matt Maddox. You've heard of Matt Maddox. If you haven't heard of him, he's, he used to pastor in Florida, and now he does all these soul winners boot camps across the country. One of the things that he did when he started soul winning like crazy was he just started telling people his testimony. That's all he did. Told people his testimony. He talked about how when he was in high school or college, one of the two, and he started telling people 
people about what God did in his life and started saving people. And, and in years, he has seen so many people baptized and receive the Holy Ghost. Just because he gets, he's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's not ashamed of his testimony. Right. He doesn't care if people think he's a freak. He doesn't care if people label him whatever they're going to label him. He said, I've got one responsibility. And Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It doesn't matter what they're doing right now. We all were lost at one point. We all were on our way to hell at one point. But somebody stopped and told us. Somebody told me about Jesus. Somebody told you about Jesus. And because of that, you have a brand new relationship with him. And so this year, the people that feel unloved, the people that feel unwanted, the people that feel lonely, abused, and neglected, the people that feel like they're living in the tombs all by themselves, those are the people that God wants to reach. Because such were some of you. Isn't that what the Bible says? Such were some of you. Now. But now you are washed. And now you are cleansed. And now you're sanctified. Because of the blood of Jesus. And because of the opportunity that we've been given. We're a brand new person. There's so many people out there. That need what we have. They want to experience what we have experienced. So don't. It's like that old song. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. One of the verses says, hide under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. The devil wants to hide that testimony under a bushel. Some of us, because of fear and anxiety and worried about whatever he's going to think about us, we hide our testimony where this God is going under. There's something different about you. Yeah, I changed my diet. Christ. And there's something different about you. Yes, there is. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you what's happened in my life. Brother Klein, Brother Doug Klein, he, everybody knows he got in a car accident a few months ago. I think he told my wife on Sunday, or somebody he talked to, said that he's been able to witness to so many people. Because people come up to him and say, what do you, what's what happened? He says, well, I got in a car accident. You know, whatever happened, and he flipped his car and all that stuff for his neck. And he talks about how God protected him and how God saved him. And he says he's, so many doors have been opened because he's not ashamed. He could have just been, man, you and some of us would just say, yeah, I got in a car accident. Yeah, I was really bad. I pulled through therapy. Yeah, I was just lucky. Luck's got nothing to do with it. No such thing as luck in my book. God had his hand of protection on him and kept him safe. And yeah, he has some bruises, sure. Does he have a messed up neck, whatever's wrong? Yeah, he's got some injuries. But that injury is allowing him to be a great witness. So yeah, the devil wanted to take my life, but I got a car wreck, but God had his hand on me. And yeah, I've got this problem, but I'm going to tell you that God can protect you, and God can be your healer, and God can be your way maker. God can be that one that when you're at that hard part in your life, and you don't know where to turn, that you can call out the name of Jesus. All I did was call out Jesus' name, and he was right there to save me.
on repentance. How God loves them and God cares for them. And he raised the dead and he healed the sick. You want a great revival? Revival always follows where there's miracles, signs, and wonders. Revival always follows where there's miracles, signs, and wonders. You say, what are you talking about? That means, like I said, my fourth point is we've got to make sure that the Spirit of God is moving in our church. Because when people are being healed, you think it's easy to tell somebody about healing? I'll share this with you. Brother Chris, is it okay if I share? We're talking about Tuesday. Brother Chris came up to me and said, if you don't like it, you can yell me later. Brother Chris came up to me and said he wanted to give back to the community. And so I said, okay. So we wanted to do some food baskets. It was his idea, so we, we got some stuff together. And thank God for Brother Chris because he organized it. We got some food together, and it got went to us, and there was a family that desperately needed food, desperately just having a hard time financially. And so we got together, we bought groceries, bought some toys for the kids. On Tuesday, we got a few of us together, went to the house, and, uh, and it was actually Sister Christina's mom and stepdad. And we went to the house, we opened up the door, Brother Scott was with us, Sister West, and myself, and I forgot who else, Christina was with us. Christina opens up the door. Hey, Brother Chris has got a few bags. I got a few bags. Brother Scott's got a few bags. We want some bags of groceries. We have toys. And there's walking and saying, Merry Christmas. And she just starts bawling. Just crying and weeping. Just overflowed with just gratitude. So surprised that somebody loved her and that there was a church that even cared. Cried and gave all of us a hug, and I think her stepdad was just shocked because he didn't really say much of anything. He just did this good there and was like overwhelmed, you know, so much going on. And so we went there, we just gave some hugs, said a couple of words, and then we took off and left. And Sister Christina texted us a few minutes after that and was like, My mom is still crying and she can't stop crying. And then she I come to her meeting, and this was a couple hours later, and I said, How's your mom doing? She's still crying? She said, no, she's been on the phone telling everybody that there's a church that cares and that you need to go to First Apostolic Church. It's amazing. A personal experience with God, with the love of God. It's real simple. I told them this at the end of last year, Galatians chapter 5, and having therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially those that are of the household of faith. There was an opportunity to do good. And so we took it, we ministered, and God blessed. And you want to talk about outreach. She was on the phone with more people in a couple of hours of her family and friends that we could have, I mean, Christine's been coming here for a year and hasn't even felt it. But because something good happened to her, she was on the phone calling everybody. There's a church that cares. I can't believe there's a church that cares. This is nothing about all of us or any of us that were there. We just had to do a quick thing. We got it together and got it done. But the fact of the matter is there's other people that have been giving out. Brother Rutledge shared a story with me earlier about how he was able to bless the family yeah. through tragedy. But, you know, circumstances went bad. But through him and, and a few other people, they were able to bless this family, give them some food and give their kids some toys. And whatnot. It's amazing what happens when something good happens in somebody's life. They will go above and beyond. That's why we got to share our experiences with God. If God touched your life, tell somebody. God filled you with the Holy Ghost, tell somebody. If God pulls you out of a trial that you thought there was no way out, guess what? There's somebody else that feels that way. And they need to know that God can reach down and pull them out. There are people that feel like Peter. They're, they're all about the waves and the wind, and they're sinking in life. But there's some of us that were sinking too, but God reached down and pulled us out. And they're waiting to know that there is a God that if you call out his name, he's going to be right there. See 
receiving the Holy Ghost, whatever you want to think about, I want you to think about the good things. Let's just do that for a moment. Well, let's just stay here for a moment. Now I want you to think about people that need to hear that story. I want you to think about somebody who needs to hear what you've experienced. I want you to think about a family member who you haven't talked to about God in a long time, but you know they're struggling. But I want you to think about them. And I want God to put a passion in your heart that says, I'm going to go to them next time. And I know I might be scared. And I know, you know it's going to be uncomfortable. But God, I've got to tell them about you. I've got to tell them 